Well, we're working on the irrigation system today as well as the water feature, and you know you can't do anything without power. And we got the power authority here today, and I got the magic button, you might say, that's going to power up the entire house. There you go, Daryl. You can snap that into place. It's just that easy. Well, from hydro to hydro, being water for the irrigation system. And with me, I've got Dave from University Sprinklers. How, How you doing, Dave? Good, Phil. Hey, this is the time to get the, uh, the sprinkler system in, eh? Yeah, absolutely. This is a great time for, the, uh, to, for us to do this work. We're going to tie in the system right this afternoon. Now, you've got a hole here, the dog on near six feet deep. Uh, what's the scoop? That's right. We, well, what we're, gonna, what we're hooking onto here is the main water supply that comes from the water meter box, which is right here. So that's the main city water. This is the main city water right here, and it heads into the house. Uh, which of course supplies the house. Now we want to hook onto this as soon as we can, closest to this meter box, and go into our main uh, tie-in. Now why are we going into the water, the main city water well, supply? Well we want to get as much water pressure and water flow as we can to keep the number of zones to the minimum ah. and, and uh, make an efficient system for the customers. So okay, that way we're not going to go through any pressure system as far yeah, as the no. metering system. No, not in this particular application. The pressure is low enough that the static water right from the city is a great pressure for us to hook on. But the meter is here, but the uh, pressure reducing valve is inside the home so therefore we're uh, in between the two That's, so we got full city pressure yeah we got as much as we can get right here what is that normally uh, around this area it's about 85, 85 85 psi yeah and normally in your house it's going to be somewhere around 40 50 psi so we're getting almost twice as much as we get if we hook in the inside the house so we're like, uh, we got a uh, like a, mani a manifold system yeah here, what right? we've got here is uh, dave's just hooked onto the main water supply and he's going to bring a plastic pipe up and uh it's all a csa pex pipe crosslink polyethylene it's going to go into this manifold assembly and this is kind of the guts of the irrigation system the water supply comes in here this is the main shutoff for the irrigation system uh -huh. this is our backflow preventer here this is required by the city to ensure that any water that gets into the system doesn't get back into the domestic water right. supply so it's very important and then this here is our blowout key what we use to winterize the system we'll come back every fall and blow air through the whole thing to make sure nothing freezes hey i can tell you a great spot to put your garden hose if absolutely, you want good yeah. pressure. Hose down your driveway or the oh, city sidewalk. Yeah, yeah absolutely. That's a nice option to have. Yeah. And, and this here? We've got three electric valves here. This is actually going to be a five zone system, but three of the electric valves we're putting here and two we're going to put somewhere else. So you can see this main line will continue further out into the field later on. Right. But these three electric valves will be controlled by the timer inside the garage. And it, it the timer tells these valves when to turn on and when to turn off. Excellent. Now, what about when we uh, go to another location? Like uh, we're going to have concrete placed. Obviously, we're going to be putting in sidewalks. And do you yeah. prepare for that now? Yeah, we do actually. And we can take a look at that right now. Right over here, where uh, the, the uh, concrete forming guys have told us that this is about where the front sidewalk is going to go. It's going to kind of meander over to the front yeah, stairs. Yeah, actually meander that over right into the front entrance of the home. Yeah, exactly. So we've been told that this is where the concrete's going to go. And we've dug down here and put a sleeve in here. And a sleeve is what we use to put the pipes through afterwards. Right. So that we don't have to drill underneath the sidewalk. Walk. Just a whole lot of saving of time. Yeah, absolutely. Now, absolutely. there's quite an elevation change that we've had to do the other side of this uh, building here on the north side. Uh, and let's go over there and take a look at what you're going to do there. Okay. Go over there and take a look at what you're going to do there. Okay. Well, you can see over here, Dave, that uh, we've had to do our grading with the, uh, the backhoe. And we've got quite a drop-off here. It's about two and a half feet. We're going to put an Allen Block uh, retaining wall in here. Yeah. And uh, what about your system as far as getting the irrigation lines in? Well, this is another good example of things that we have to plan ahead for. If the wall is put up and then we come in afterwards, then there's a good chance we'll undermine the wall. And this is all things that we look at the landscape plan, see what's going to end up happening. And once the plan's finalized, then we can make any minor changes. But this is an important uh, thing to get. Uh, With the system here being, or at least our landscaping, uh, being basically dirt right now and yeah. being all graded level, it, that's the time really. I can't overemphasize, that's the time you want to put the irrigation system in? That's right. It's a little muddy right now, and we'd like it a little, a little drier. You know, everybody would, but waiting until the grass is down is going to cost even more in time and money, and we'll just end up redoing stuff that the landscapers have done properly the first time. Now, we've got a water feature going in at the front there, as you can see, and yep. you're going to come around that, so therefore, yep. there's no problem with uh, all of a sudden they say, that's where we want to put the, the water feature. Oh, we got irrigation lines that's in That's right. Now we know. Now we know, and in fact, we've already talked to the, the, the landscape contractor for the pond, and he's mentioned that he'd like a water supply.
supply for the pond so that he can refill it automatically. So that's something that we're going to, we've also planned on. That hey, that's right great. And that'll be from the, the main water system again before such times it goes in through exactly. the pressure reducing exactly. valve in the house. Yeah. Now, all of this being uh -huh. said, you're going to have five zones, uh, three from the bottom, put another two elsewhere. Yeah. How is this all controlled? This is all going to be controlled by an electronic timer, which will go inside the garage. And we can take a look at that as well. And it's very easy for the homeowner to program when they want the system coming on and for how long and which different zones. Let's go and take a look at it. Alrighty. Okay, so here's the brains of it all, Shell. We've got a Rainbird E-Class controller, which will give them control over the whole system, and this is where the homeowner can program in which zones they want to come on and what time of the day and that sort of thing. Now, what about the uh, the system? It's uh, getting ready to be totally uh, attached as far as wires attached in the proper uh, zone locations, but what's your next step? The next step is we've called an inspection for tomorrow for that tie-in area that I showed you. The city likes to take a look at the backflow preventer there. Once we've got the concrete poured and the, the rough grading done, then our crews will come in and install the remainder of the irrigation system. And, and then that's, that's the heads? That, that's the heads and the risers and that sort of thing, the nozzles. Right. Test it all out. And then that's when we'll come back to this controller. We'll wire everything into the final zone locations and test it out. For and test time. it out. And bingo, uh, Bob's your uncle. We got water. Yeah, yeah, we're ready for the sun to shine. Hey, isn't that great? And uh, one thing about the irrigation uh, systems, it gives you that control of uh, water restrictions. Yeah. And that's very important uh, with today's water uh, uh, shortages uh, yeah, it, across the it sure it, is. Nation, it sure is, and what we tell our customers is, is rather than setting this and forgetting it for the whole season, it's more important that you come out here maybe once a week and change the times just based on the weather, whether it's overcast or really sunny, that sort of thing, and you can adjust that easily with the push of one button. And one of the things I don't want to overlook, that uh, your system, uh, as far as uh, university sprinklers, you come and you winterize and then also uh, get it all ready for the season in the spring. Absolutely. We offer full service year-round, including the winterizing and the spring. That start. means a lot. It sure does. Dave, Thanks very much. It's Thank just you, great. Sean. Looking forward to seeing the whole system I, out there doing its thing. I think it'll look great. Super. Hey, Ken, I didn't think you were going to be part of this water feature. How you doing? Very well, Sean. How good, are you doing? Good, good. Well, listen, hey, come on up here and tell me about this whole water feature. Folks, we got Ken from the uh, beautiful Squire Water Gardens uh, Systems. And hey, tell us about this. Well, when we got here this morning, all we had was a flat piece of ground. And what we did is we marked it out uh, according to what we discussed previously of the uh, size of pond that you're looking for. Almost looks like a hot tub. Well, not quite. Once we're done, you'll see a, a dramatic difference between the two. But uh, we dug it out. We dug it down in shelves. All this was dug by hand so that we can get our accurate shelves built in. Ah, uh, that's why. I was going to say, why don't you have a little backhoe for doing this? Well, no little backhoe is accurate enough to build the curves and edges and get it really, really perfect the way Needs I need that, it. Needs uh, that real human touch. Yeah, that way it looks a lot more natural. Once you put machinery on here, uh, you're not going to have the smooth smooth lines that you'd find in nature. And now, I see you got uh, some, uh, well, it looks like a water, uh, what is it, a reservoir you got up the Well, top what I've got there is what's called the biofault of this particular system, and on this end here, I what I've got is a skimmer, uh -huh. and uh, what happens is the pump is located in the skimmer, which draws all the water into the skimmer, pulling all the surface debris with it like leaves and branches, which will make the cleanup of this particular pond so simple because it'll be working 24 hours a day, drawing all the, all the leaves into a basket or a net, and to clean it out, you just grab the net and dump it over and put her down, and that way you're not always having to fish around trying to get leaves and branches out of the bottom of your pond. Hey, you mean maintenance friendly? Maintenance super friendly. If you've got about four minutes a month you can have a pond. Wow. Now what about it? Are we going to have some fish in here? Well, we're going to have some I got fish. I fishing pole ready. Uh, well, not quite that kind of fish, but I've got some fish in the truck waiting to go in here. And, you uh, mean you got fish here? It's going to go in that quick? You got fish here today already? They're here and they're ready to go in. They're ready to go. Wow. You, and my goodness sakes, it's just about lunchtime now. And just you... about lunch. We've got the hole dug. Uh, shortly we're going to be putting in the felt liner, which is what you're uh, standing in front of. Uh -huh. And then after the felt liner, which is more of a protective coating, we're going to put the uh, the rubber EPDM liner in, which oh. is a fish grade rubber liner. It's 45 mil thick and it's made specifically for use in water gardens. Now, I see you got a bunch of rocks around. You got some big, some small. You even got some uh, red lava rock. Where's that all of it? Well, once the liner goes in, what we'll be doing is covering the entire bottom of the pond with rocks and gravel. And that'll help with uh, bacterial growth. Bacteria is also a, a, a combatant or a competition for the nutrients that'll keep your algae level down and it'll keep your pond crystal clear. Now, water gardens, really, we're yep. talking about gardens in the form of plants as well. That's correct. And uh, that's another thing that's waiting patiently in the truck. I've got a full array of different plants. I've got some lilies and marginal plants. And when you see by the end of the segment, it'll all be planted and finished complete and it'll look gorgeous. Now tell me, 
When it comes to putting in a water garden like this, is it best to do it at this time when everything's in its rough state? Well, um, yeah, it's, it's a good time as far as the, the, the condition of the site, but it's pretty much can be done any time. As long as you're not trying to bring a back row across here, once the pond's in, it can be worked around. So what you're telling me, if this was a fully landscaped lot, uh, an existing home, for yep. example, and someone wanted a water feature, they could uh, actually have a water feature. You'd throw everything out, likely on tarps, yep. and then at the end of the day, it would look as though it just kind of sprouted out of the ground. It'll look like it's always been there. Our our main goal building a water feature is to have it look like it's always been there. Great. Well, we'll let you get back at it, and uh, we'll be back to see you. Okay, bring your shovel, shovel. You bet. Hey, Ken, I've been waiting for this to let these fish away in this pond. It looks gorgeous. Well, let's, let's get them in there and get them in their new home. All right. Let's lay it in there. And they've been all seasoned to the water temperature? Yeah, you bet. They've been sitting for the last little while here. Oh, their new home. Oh, hey, look at them. Way they go. Goldfish and koi. You bet. Wow, those are beautiful. And they're in there, their new environment. You would, know, you, would you do the honors of plugging it in? Hey, let me do that. What an asset to this home. That's going to look gorgeous as a water feature in the front lawn here, Ken. Well, I enjoy doing it. Thank you very, very much. Thank I really you. appreciate that. There's a lot happening inside as well, folks. As you can see, we've got cabinets piled around. We've got uh, the painters finishing up. We've got the bath fitter putting the new bath fitter system in upstairs as well as downstairs. We've got the kitchen cabinet installers taking place. In fact, we've got the floor finishing taking place as well. Let's take a look at the floor. Hey, Doug, how are you doing? Not too bad, Shell, and yourself? Great, great. What are you up to? Oh, I've just uh, finished doing a repair here. There used to be a heater vent that was here, but they moved it over. All right. So I've had to uh, pull the boards back and stagger them so it doesn't look like a straight line once the floor is finished. So you went out and got some old pieces and everything else to uh, fill in where the old heat register came out? Yes, I did, and it'll match up perfectly once it's all sanded and finished. Hey, look at that. You can't even see the patch. I'll tell you, Doug, you're doing it. I better let you get out of though. Super. We're down in the downstairs bathroom where the bath fitter system is being installed today in the bathtub area. And it's a quite a unique system. And we got Calvin with us today from Bath Fitter. How are you doing, Calvin? Hello there. Hey, you're hard at it. Uh, yeah, you what bet. are you doing right now? Well, today we're replacing the wall, the ceiling, and uh, putting in a brand new tub over this old one here. Hey, that old tub, isn't that a great tub? I bought that for five bucks at a recycling uh, place because I knew we were going to use the bath uh, fitter system. So why not use it? Excellent idea. Now Excellent. tell me, you just put a bunch of uh, gobbly goop on there. It looks like <laughs> a butyl caulking. What's that all about? Well, that's exactly what it is. I've applied my two-sided butyl tape all throughout the tub here. Uh -huh. We're just about ready to install the tub, actually. Hey, let me take that caulking gun there, and you all can right. uh, get at that as well. You tell me you don't need a hand, so everything's going to go according to Hoyle, eh? Yep, it's all cut and ready to go. Now tell me, uh, this one here is a pearl color. What choices do you have in the bath fitter system? Boy, is that ever slick. We have quite a few different colors to choose from, uh, and as well as a tile, tile pattern for the wall. Uh -huh. And That's it. You can do all the grunting twist. and groaning you want there, but it's looking nice and neat. In she goes. In she goes. Look at that. Almost before your eyes, folks, we've got a complete new bathtub liner. Isn't that something? Else? Now tell me, the color this one here is pearl. And what if you want a tile pattern? Well, there's a tile pattern available for the walls. Yeah, yeah. and the marble, I understand, as well. Marble, marble colors. And so easy to maintain because you just take a squeegee and squeegee it down. That's the wonderful thing about this product, Shell, is that it, it's not, not like a ceramic tile with the grout lines. Right. You can just keep this thing clean. So that's full acrylic tub walls right up to the ceiling top. That's right. The wall is a one-piece unit, seamless. There's only a join at the tub and up at the ceiling, and those will get carefully caulked, and trim gets put on each edge here, and that's pretty much it. Hey, I'll tell you, you make it look just that easy. Bath fitter system, I think, uh, Calvin has got it made. Now, I guess this is uh, something that goes in, so I'll let you put that in, and sure. uh, we'll leave you to get at it, because you've got one upstairs to do. Thank you very much. All right. 
Well, now it's time for the kitchen cabinets, folks. And this is always the project that really makes everything come together. And with me, I got Frank from Columbia Cabinets. How are you doing, Frank? Good. Hey, it's always great to see you finish installers come in and start putting cabinets up. And I know that colors, you see every color in the rainbow when it comes to cabinetry. What have we got here? What sort of coordinate have we got? Well, this is a maple, and it's a ginger finish on, on here, on the uppers anyways, and there's some dark accents. The bottom is a different color. As it's you really see. neat. In fact, I recall the interior designer when she was going through the cabinets with me and she was saying that she wanted something with a white, with a uh, almost an antique uh, silver on it. And I said, well, hey, that sounds almost like a tuxedo. So what are they calling this color? That's exactly it. The tuxedo. color is tuxedo. Wouldn't you know it? I tell you. Well, tell me, cabinetry is uh, always designed, and I know you people have uh, designers that work with the interior designers of the home, but what's this gonna look like? Give us an idea. This is obviously a glass door here that's going in the corner. Right, this is what we call is a mutton door. Uh -huh. And this cabinet is gonna be placed in that corner, and the cabinet's gonna come across here, and this section here, this is about the center of, uh, of this wall here, the range below here, mm -hmm. and this is gonna be actually a raised upper. It's gonna be six Let's inches take higher. Let's that here. Because here's a plan here I see you're working from here. Right. Let's show it to the, the camera. Now, this is where the center of the range is here. And this right. is the cabinet here that we're putting in. That's the corner cabinet. And then uh, another cabinet in next. And then the raised. Oh, raised over it's top. It's going to be raised, yeah. Oh, it just gives nice. it a, a different elevation look. And it really, uh, there's four-inch pillars that are going on either side, uh -huh. which gives it a nice, beefy look. And you now know? there's going to be a range hood in here as well? Right. There's a range hood right there, but we don't supply that. That's Great. Well, that's going to be all in place, though, and the electrician can get that into place. But right. what a beautiful, I can't wait to see it finished. So I really appreciate uh, taking the time. I know you've got two other crew members here that are working uh, with you. And I know we've got a deadline, so we've got to get going. We're thanks busy. We've got to get cruising. Much. Well, we thanks won't hold you. You keep going. All right. You bet. Boy, I tell you, talk about dust and new construction. And you know, folks, that's what we're going to be talking about today, is dust in that heating system. And with me, I've got Al from Rayvan Furnace Duct Cleaning. How are you doing, Al? Good, Al. Boy, now, I'll tell you, talk about dust. Look at the uh, debris in here, the drywall dust, and down on the floor here. In fact, I want to pull out this uh, filter here. I'll give you that there, Al. Thanks. And it's... Uh, now, this is a high-efficiency filter, folks. And look at here. Now, this has been running, obviously, during the construction. But look at this. That, that's drywall dust. And you know, in a lot of construction sites, that never gets clean. In fact, that gets left for the new homeowners. But not in this case. I'll tell you, we bring in Al to do the job. Al, tell us about what you do. Well, what we do, Shell, is we've got a big uh, vacuum hose. We've already cut out here a hole that we attach the vacuum to. This is the hot air plenum, so this therefore is, this is the hot side of the furnace. That's correct. And uh, we clean the hot side first, we seal the furnace off, then we cut another hole in the cold air side, uh -huh. the return side, and we clean each side of the system separately. Now, how do you clean it? Now, tell me. I know a lot of people, they phone me up and they say, Shell, the fellow come in to clean our furnace ducts and he come in with a shop vac over his shoulder. It doesn't work. We attach this big vacuum hose. Oh, better take that out of there. Yeah. Up to the main plenum. Uh-huh. So then what we do is we start out by cleaning all the secondary runs on the hot air side. Right over here, Al. Let's see Okay. That. Okay. Now this little plastic uh, round ball on the end. Uh, oh, it's got holes in it. Yes, it does. Okay. They either come in six or 12 holes. They come in either plastic or aluminum, these bulbs. Okay, now this gets uh, obviously shoved down the duct. Isn't it? That is correct. This here has the holes pointing forward, which it's hard to see them, but they're right on the top here. So it fans out on a 45 degree. Okay. So with the vacuum running, what we do is we insert that into each duct one at a time and we pressure clean each artery. Right, okay, so, and now what sort of pressure is coming through that? 210 PSI. Wow, okay, so there's not gonna be much hanging on up in the cat hair, dog hair, uh, lint. Uh, it's gone. Construction uh, debris. It's gone. It's history. There's nothing left in this. And system. it all comes back into the big black pipe. Correct. That goes out to the street, to out, where your truck's Out in. to the truck. What happens with the cold air? 
with you the cold the air. Do you use the same sort of uh, nozzle? Uh, with the cold air, what we do there is we enter each run at where the vent is. Uh -huh. We cut, again, the holes in the cold air return side. And we have these units here that have the reverse holes on them. Oh, so it blows back the other way. Then. It sucks back the other way. So if we have the pipe here where we're hooked up with our suction, right. and the main plenum run, runs 40 feet the other way, we go in with this, and it air scrapes that complete ducting, whether it's rectangular, round, I like that term you say, air scrape. So that's yes. really what it's doing. The pressure of the air is scraping the inside it of the duct. It scrapes the inside of the pipe clean. Mm -hmm. And we just use the vacuum to take it out of the house. Okay, now the average number of uh, registers and cold air returns in a home, how many would there be? Approximately 15 on an average size house. And what are we talking cost-wise? Uh, around the $300 mark. So starting around $300 and up, depending on the size of the home. One of the things I want to stress as well, Al, to the homeowners that uh, certainly will be interested in this type of cleaning, is the uh, number of cleanings that should take place over a period, say, of uh, 10 years. I know I quite often say it should be done every two to three years. Well, with the way that we do it here, and those pipes are air scraped, they are actually cleaner than new. Mm -hmm. And they're on an average three to five years. Three to five years, so I was bang on there. Yeah. Now, homeowners, when they hear you, you cut a hole here, you cut a hole there, but when you leave, they would never know you were there. Um, the only thing that they're going to see are these plates. They have a gasket on the inside. Right. We put them back up over our hole. We put in eight screws. They're sealed tight. And that's on the duct, so therefore it's not going to look one bit different than what it did before. No, it's not. Well, I and we're going to know that the inside of the pipes are clean. Are we have clean. an infrared uh, camera and TV that we can put so in there. So you can actually put an infrared camera down there and, uh, and see it right on the monitor as to... We can it, show every homeowner that it is dead clean. There isn't a dime left. So it doesn't system. matter if they're under concrete floors, overhead, or in the walls. You can show them what's in there. You bet. i got to say, Al, you do one heck of a job. Yes. Thank you very much. And I'm going to watch as you uh, continue on here. But uh, thanks for coming out and cleaning because we want this home to be clean for the new homeowners. It'll be dead clean. Thank you kindly. Okay. Well, you can see, folks, we're wrapping things up here at the Rankin Farm Home. In fact, the painters are finishing up. We got this beautiful Allen Block wall in, separating the two uh, dimensions here as far as levels of the yard. And I'll tell you, things are really rolling. And in fact, we got the fence posts in, ready for the pickets, and the landscaping. Let's talk about landscaping. Well, I see Dave is here today working on the irrigation system to keep the landscaping nice and green. Hey, how are you doing, Dave? Good, Shell. How are you? Great, great. What are you up to with all these flags? This kind of looks neat. Yeah, well, these are all the different uh, markers that we use, so I can tell my guys where I want all the different heads to go. And, of course, they're different colors because we've got different zones, groups, of, different groups of heads on the whole site here. We've got five zones total. Oh, I see. So, so five in, different color flags. Wow. So in here where Image put the, uh, the garden beds, the garden beds now are elevated. Does that mean a difference uh, to a head? That's right. It does mean a difference to a head in this particular area where the garden is. We've also got different heads in the large open areas versus the smaller areas around the other side of the house, too. Oh, we use I a rotor-style head in the big area, so it covers a large area more efficiently. And smaller mister-style heads in all the small garden beds and even the small grass areas, too. Great. So, therefore, with the fence line in now, You'll have some heads on the inside, obviously, because uh, grass will be on both sides. Exactly, yeah. We can't hey, spray through the fence. Great. Well, I can't wait to see this all green and flowers and trees. It's going to look absolutely great, but University of Sprinklers are going to keep it nice and green. <laughs> you bet. I guarantee it. Thanks very much, Dave. Thanks, Appreciate Shel. that. Bye-bye.